to make it accessible to everyone as a Zika X Diamond League edition. So we have created together an edition which uh, can be bought for special conditions and with special content also. In. And one content is really personal because an athlete will personally sign their own bib and it will be handed over with the car, with some other uh, merchandise. So I think uh, a very good offer. And of course, all our cars, we just announced it, are uh, very sustainable, just um, were rated with a five-star NCAP rating, the green NCAP rating. So very sustainable, very um, efficient in terms of energy management and so on and so forth. So we are really happy to also uh, combine this sponsorship, this event. Yeah, it's just like you said, it's been a roller coaster um, and I survived the trials. That's pretty much all you can do. I, everything about that meet is stressful. It's not very fun, um, but you just try to come out on the other side having made the team and I'm so grateful that I did that. Um, but with that being said, I do feel like a few weeks ago we turned a corner with the Achilles and I'm starting to really get good training in again, um, both on the runway and just running workouts. So I'm building up that fitness again um, that is required at these types of meets with this caliber of women jumping. So I think it's really important for me because I've made like other diamond leagues, but I never felt like at the right place because I, I didn't feel really legitimate to be there. And today I feel lit and I know that I can jump with this type of girls. <laughs> And so I think it's a, like a consecration and it's the biggest meeting in the world. So I have to take it and to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's a really difficult question to answer because context is everything. You know, I think what made it so special that night was that Katie and I were like a legitimate draw and there was nothing between us and it felt right in that moment. I think it also reflects maybe where I was at in my career and where I was at with my own personal belief. You know, I it felt right and I did it. And, you know, thinking about the Olympic Games, I don't want to say that I, I would take, I would do the jump off, but, you know, there is that fire in me that, you know, I want the outright gold medal, you know, I'm, I'm sure Katie does as well. So, um yeah, I, I think I would do the jump off and yeah, I'd roll the dice. Uh, <laughs> I don't think there's some improvement. I mean, okay, there's always some things to work on, but it's almost perfect. I, um, I couldn't think I could run that fast and uh, going onto that top five, it's completely crazy. And uh, I'll, I'm here for, um, to run 141 again, I hope so and uh, to prove to myself that I can be that fast again. To being broken, perhaps. Yeah, uh, for the first part, I, I'm, I'm hoping that, that I can break 142 at some point. I know um, the training has been going really well, and um, based off the results, I'm definitely in, in that sort of uh, shape to be able to run that. Um, and I also believe that now seeing that race, um, you know, some guys have had massive P P PRs and uh, it goes to show that when you put your mind to it and you really get after it, uh, you don't really know what you're capable of and uh, I think I think that, that world record is definitely um, it's it's definitely within the horizon now so um, It's one of the things where it's a blessing in disguise, you know I'm paving the way for young hurdlers like Sasha and, and I'm paving the way also myself and my own legacy but um, I think the biggest thing is is when I run I kind of control my own destiny in that race, you know. If I make a mistake, then I know it's gone. But I think the main goal is, is, you know, we show up to these races, we just want to be able to win, you know. We want to be able to show good form. We want to be able to stay consistent. We want to be able to come out here and put together a race plan or a race model that we'll be doing the same thing in about a month from now which at the Olympic Games. So I think the world record is um, it's overrated. Um, but I think at the same time, you know, that's what gets the buzz. You know, that's the buzz around my name. So I think that's a good thing. Be that guy he's chasing. Uh, and obviously, I don't want him to catch me. <laughs> but um, to be that guy that he's chasing and he's, you know, planning his races and watching my film and asking me questions, it kind of gives me 
you know, that I'm, it gives me that, that feeling that I'm doing the right thing. You know, and for me, I know this sport isn't everything that I got. You know, I know once I leave the sport, I want to be done with it. But I know if I'm putting my trust, putting my, my, I guess, putting my work ethic into somebody else, you know, someone else will be able to hold that throne. And, you know, obviously we're at his hometown and here in the, in the next month, um, I don't mean to be a, a homecoming parade pooper, but uh, I feel like that's what I have to do. Euh, Grant c'est bien sûr un modèle et c'est un de mes concurrents préférés euh, je pense qu'il y a une amitié entre nous euh, mais juste derrière les blocs au dernier moment ça part et on est des concurrents moi je veux sa tête, il veut ma tête euh, et dès que la ligne d'arrivée en passe ben, c'est de retour ami et je pense que c'est vu au, au, au championnat du monde il m'a pris en tout son bras il m'a donné des conseils pour la finale et, et je pense que même s'il y aura tout le temps ce côté compétitif normal puisqu'on veut tous les deux gagner euh, il y aura toujours un, un, un niveau de respect pour l'un l'autre qui, qui est énorme euh, mais c'est normal que, que je veux le battre et le jour J où j'irai ma première course en train de le battre j'irai très content <rire> I mean, I'll be a little remiss if I didn't admit that the, the time difference is a bit, um, it's a bit difficult. Um, I get up at five every morning <laughs> and I try to stay awake until 12. Um, so that's, it's been, it's been tough, you know, and I think that's part of the reason why we're so reluctant to come this far. It's, I think it's a little different if you live on the East Coast and you're flying to London but living in California, in Los Angeles, it's, it's 12, sometimes 13 hours both ways. So it, it takes some time to adjust. And you may feel good the first two days, and I, I, by day five, it's like, all right, I'm just absolutely just cooked. Um, but um, I feel good. I, I mean, like, I'm not really... Um, I'm not, I'm not really feeling the jet lag as much as I used to in previous years. And um, like I was telling our great host here, it's like you sleep when you're tired. <laughs> and the good thing about this meet, it's at 8 o'clock tomorrow. So I have some time to sleep before I go race. So I'll be good. It's like uh, I'm, I have the feeling that like I'm way better than I was in 2021. I run faster in 2022, but I'm feeling better than 22 already. So it's exciting to just be able to compare yourself with like the previous season, the previous race, and you know like how fast you can be, like how better you can be in the track. So I can tell that like I'm a better shape. I'm excited about like the f the shape that I am to go to the Olympic Games. Of course, like each of us gonna say like I'm gonna say that I'm gonna win. Cross gonna say Cross. Revenge gonna be Benjamin. But it is what it is. That's like why. It's so nice, you know, you cannot predict anything. <laughs> oh, you want me to say something? Okay. <laughs> there is this saying that history repeats itself. No, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. Um, no, but, <laughs> no but, but, but seriously, um, I actually have a lot of respect for these two, these two guys because pff, every time we're on the line, they make me run for it and uh, hopefully they feel the same way. Uh, tomorrow I think there's a big chance one of us is going to win and uh, I think the three of us will fight equally for it.